So the next one is a safety sensitivity, which comes from the schizoid personality disorder. Now, these are the people that um, it, it's basically they're looking at a psychological safety sensitivity. Okay, so they tend to be justifying their actions. They're looking for the Goldilocks zone. Okay, so what they tend to do is they tend to um, do things like they're probably the most common um, thing is saying, oh, you just want me to do this. Or they project their fears, you know, that... that um, you just want you're just saying this because you want me to do this and you're thinking no that's not what I'm thinking at all what they're basically saying is that's what they would do if they were in your situation and that's the fear that they're projecting and that's what they don't want okay so people that are safety um, safety sensitive they're very uncomfortable with others intruding into their sense of self okay and this includes questioning business strategies too where it comes into it and they just go you know it, it's not comfortable for them they come up with this good idea, they put a lot of work in there um, and it's just not working. They don't want to hear that it's not working because of something that they've done. Um, and that's where it comes into that, that's where it becomes unsafe for them as well. And they're very uncomfortable with that. Okay. Insecurity, insecurity may be projecting, questioning why help is offered. Okay. Rejecting, re rejecting it, feeling that they need to be independent. I can do this myself. Okay. What are you saying? I don't have the skills, you know. Um, that's what's going on in their mind. It often leads to them struggling with networking with people and they go, well, look, people just don't understand me. They can be very upfront and honest, um, but making decisions in regards to the fact that they haven't gotten to know the person and they've come out with stuff and they feel that, you know, because they don't want people to know they're in a dark secrets and everything else, there's a lot of trust in there and it takes a bit for them to let them in. Now, looking at conversational intelligence, they say, um, you know, networking, you want to deal with people you know, like, and trust. Okay, trust is a big thing for safety sensitive people. Okay, they don't build trust in people very easily, or they put people into situations where they try and get to know them before they actually trust them. And then they, it might be let down, but they're constantly looking for a way that this person is going to misplace their trust. Okay, they're very sensitive to that. Okay, so it can drive you nuts sometimes. Okay, they're often told, they're often told to come out of your shell. Okay, now this doesn't work. For, um, they may think in, in, in an alternate re reality is the other thing too. They've created this reality, they justified it where this is most, the most logical thing that's happening and that's what keeps them in the Goldilocks zone, in the safe zone, okay? They don't need to tell people more. They don't need to, for people to, uh, they don't need to ask people more information. They, this is just, this is what is. That's what it is, okay? Um, they can be coached into unsustainable behaviors okay because what happens is it, it requires them giving in to someone else's opinion um, and yeah this is where it comes into that people can get too close um, now too close is like I said they want to be in the Goldilocks zone where they want people to be close to them and, and get to know them but they don't want them to close and be and a lot of times they don't want their actions to be predictable to other people they want to be seen as being different and unpredictable if they're if you're the same or you can predict their actions and that seems like they're the same as other people okay overall attachment they're afraid of being controlled and that's why they avoid closeness okay so that's that's the general theme that you'll get from them there as well okay Okay, prime goals of the primary defense, safe compromise between closeness and distance. Okay, it's push-pull, go away, come back, go away, come back, okay. Um, what they're looking at avoiding, they're looking at uh, a loss of self-association with closeness um, and isolation as well, okay. So they don't want to be seen as a couple, for example, okay. That's, that's something that's going to be a big thing for them. They want to be seen as an individual, okay. Unwanted effects, okay, engulfment, exile, and isolation. So extremes. So, um, you know, that's where it can be if they're in a relationship and um, someone is getting too close, that they feel like they've been absorbed into that person and, and, and um, it's totally um, overwhelming for them in a lot of cases there as well. And it's too much effort. Um, they're vigilant too. Um, safety, isolation or control or misappropriation, um, intrusion, Intense emotion, okay, so any extremes is not a good thing for them. They're very stoic in their thinking, okay? What's the worst that can happen, okay? And if they see that happening, that's that, that's where they're going to take steps to um, prevent it. And this is where they could isolate themselves. No, 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 just stop talking to me. I'm just trying to do it, okay? They're like the busy CEO that's, you know, you go, no, just yeah, hang on, don't talk to me, okay? I'll, I've just got to get this done, okay? So primary defense strategy is self-sufficient okay 
partial attachment, okay? fantasy as a safe relationship and withdrawal. Okay, so fantasy is a safe relationship. They tend to, um, you know, like to do, you know, they might be you're, you're um, you know, going and doing the role play games or something online and that sort of thing. When they talk about um, is gaming addiction an actual medical condition now? Um, this is somewhere that someone that's safety sensitive, sometimes they need an escape from the real world and that's what's safe for them as well. Okay, so um, they're, um, they might appear to have a, be in an attachment or be attached to something, but they're not really. And they just, you know, it's very easy for them to snap and change their mind. And they could even have a dysfunctional attachment in, in some cases there as well. Okay, which makes them quite under, unpredictable in their actions. Okay, um, so they're called offensive decision. Again, what's going on in their head? If I let another, if, if I let another close, he or she will overwhelm and control me. Okay, closeness is not safe. So this is what they're doing is the, one of the reasons why they don't want people to get close to them is they feel like you're going to control them. So if you do have someone in this situation, they've got to know that they've got the choice. They can do whatever they like. I'm not trying to manipulate you. I'm just trying to say this is what people are saying. Okay, now this is where the trust comes into it. It takes for them to accept you. Closeness is not safe. Now for them, them to accept you and not to be resisting you, means that you're getting close and this is where you've got to watch that you can all of a sudden get too close okay so others the way that other other representation what they want other people to see them as a positive okay they want to be seen as safe respectful of boundaries accepting of self-sufficiency okay so they're self-sufficient so they want they're going to be accepting you oh well you know you you know yeah you can do it you you don't need me and all this sort of stuff Okay, that's when you're probably getting a bit too close to them there as well. Okay, so they don't mind that. So, they, so they're going to be seem like someone that's willing to work with, but they're not going to jump in and they're not going to be, um, you know, they may not be the best mentor because mentors need to come in and tell you what to do. Okay, but if, to do that, they've got to have the trust there as well and they might see that as overstepping the boundaries. Okay, so they might be a good coach because coaches have to go through and work out a plan and things like that too. All good at training. Um, not so much training um, in in the sense of basic skills um, because, you know, that's sort of getting into, um, they've got to get a little bit too close and, and get you to trust them in that respect there as well. So that's not a natural thing for them. Okay, others' representations, the negatives, okay. They can be smothering, controlling, depriving, cold, indifferent, okay. This is how, when they feel that you're getting too close, this is how they're going to act towards you. Okay, so this is this is something to be mindful of. If you see these things coming in, okay, this is where they're they're trying to do it. Now, why would smothering be looking at sending you away? Because in, when someone smothers them, that's what's going to send them away. Okay, so they're just basically projecting that fear, and this is what I mean is that they, um, you know, they're afraid of being controlled. But this is so. This is why if they're trying to, um, you know, give you a negative representation of themselves. These are the sort of stuff that they're going to do. So look at what you're doing at this stage and wondering why have I gotten too close on this? Thing? And ask them the question. Look, do you want to be left alone? Are you okay with this sort of thing? You know, it's like you don't have to tell me. You know, but is is there something? You know, what's what's the reasoning for this sort of thing? Why do you feel that I need this extra attention? Why do you feel that you have to come in and control me? You know. And all this sort of thing and that'll trigger something in their mind to go well hang on no i don't like that either okay so that's what's going to change their actions there as well okay self-representation what they see is a positive they want to be safe they want to be self-sufficient they want to be independent they want to be quietly understood they don't need you to keep affirming how smart they are they don't need you to keep saying that um you know oh yeah you know i understand or yeah you're right okay they, they they're not looking for this okay they just need to know that you understand it. How do they know that you understand it? Well, you they give you advice and you do it, okay? So if they give you advice and you can't do it, then you need to go to them and say, look, I don't understand, okay? Because they think, they just assume that you do understand, okay? So the negative is, um, you know, they could, they see it as a negative if they're a slave, they're controlled, they're smothered. So all the stuff that they were doing um, up the top there, okay? They feel lost or they're in exile. They, they're unable to communicate or connect. People just don't understand me again, okay? So this is where that's that's one that comes out there with the safety sensitive too, okay? Now, when we talk about this sort of thing, there's there's certain, 
um, disorders like people with Asperger's and stuff like that are going to have a lot of these sort of traits too. But the thing with the disability um, and with autism is they can't change the way they think. So it doesn't matter. If you just tell them, I oh, think positively, that's not going to help them. Okay. Um, and they're not going to give you enough information that you can get down to the deep seated um, issue unless you're close to them. So this is where it's a double edged sword for them. They can let you in um, and you get close to them and you can help them better. But there's more chance that they're going to be abused or they're going to be manipulated if they let you do that. And they're going to, and then they're going to go, oh, I feel so stupid. You know, it's not that they're stupid. It's just that they trusted you, um, and you know they're trusting that you can help. Them, okay. So, the primary dilemma. Okay, to seek closeness, closeness is to be taken advantage of. Okay. Separate is to be left in isolation. They don't want to be isolated. Feel isolated either. Okay. So. Unspoken demands placed on others, intense pressure for safety, non-intrusiveness. You know, um, you'll ask them how was their weekend and all this sort of stuff. Oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, what'd you get up to? Oh, you know, I went here. And, oh yeah. What, what? What? What did you do? What? You, you know? Do you want to? You know? In their mind, it's like saying, well, you know, did you have sex with your wife? What? You know, this this sort of thing is what's going on in their head when you start to get too intrusive with them okay but they're not going to say that you know they're going to talk about it but then they, it's going to make them feel uncomfortable okay and this is where um, you need to recognize this sort of thing just because you want to know or you don't think it's an issue um, this is where people that are um, separation sensitive may cross the line with them okay and but people with safety sensitive have very clearly defined borders in their head maybe not so much they they've told you as well but you need to look at the fact that as soon as you cross the line they're going to snap okay because they know exactly where it is and anyone that goes over it it's going to be a reaction that's going to come from there as well it's going to trigger this reaction okay so extroverts what are they looking at extroverts often um, fears manipulation based on what they might do um, they think out loud they push away they're dismissive of ideas okay so they, they just come out with it okay um, now introverts they're likely to, to withdraw to recharge they may ghost people when they're in proximity as well. They just don't want to deal with it because they're talking to them and they don't want to be seen to talking because they're not actually listening to them. Okay, um, They don't want to be involved in the conversation. So they, it's, it's like, you know, they, they, they might even just walk off halfway through a conversation um, and they wouldn't even realise that, that that's what's happened because in their mind, you haven't been talking to them. Okay, 